cut my dick off and I'll change my name to Terry or Lee or something else neutral, but it won't change what I know. Does this look like your dick? Ah, uh, no, that was mine. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing better to start a show with a dick joke. Uh -huh. Boing. <laughs> Oh, hello, everybody. Welcome. Um, well, I am Robert. Now that we have the dick joke out of the road, we can move on to science <laughs> and fiction. My name is Robert, and I am your host. Thank you so much for coming back to uh, an episode of Science Fiction Remnant. And uh, who do we have here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Cookie Monster? Cookie Monster. It's a cookie Monster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Here I am, Captain Chaos, bro. <laughs> and um, I'm Mad Scientist Ray from down in Australia. Come Just on, Ray. You couldn't tell by my accent. You could do it, Ray. Do the Mad Scientist. I cannot play chess with people from Australia, man. Marty! Marty! You've got to come back to the future with me! Let's <laughs> Just check. I, I don't know, but I think I, I, I really like when, when um, Ray does his, like, evil laugh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like... <laughs> What's evil about that? There's nothing evil about that. Moment. Moment. How many times you step in front of the mirror and did that to practice it? <laughs> oh, nice. So, Ray... Yep. Um, Ray Pie. <laughs> That's go, never going to get old. <laughs> I know. It's, I'm just stuck with it, aren't I? And if you totally guys want some it. context to that, we're not going to mention anything about that Ray Pie thing. Okay? If you guys okay. want context, you have to go to our Discord. It's an in joke. <laughs> Is your Easter. Uh, As in, in bad taste. Yeah, just <laughs> it's either funny if you look. <laughs> So what have you guys been watching? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. I'll go first. Okay, okay, you go first. Star Trek. Is it Babylon Five? Is it? <laughs> is it? My cool wife. I watch Star Trek with me. I'm is watching it, uh, Star Trek. I leave it up is to it, you. Is it? Is it Babylon? <laughs> <laughs> it's still on my queue, by the way. Uh -huh. Actually, it's in multiple queues. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! Oh, Jesus <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we got we're gonna do an episode, uh, even if it's the first the first uh, episode of Babylon Five. Hashtag make Robert watch Babylon Five. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hey, you should put you should put to just remember everybody. Uh, 10K as tattoo. Oh. Go ahead for for <laughs> for all of those listeners who are listening to our show what are we this doing episode for the first time. Why don't you go ahead and explain? So if we get ten k subscribers, we're gonna make a poll. So you guys decide what tattoo, tattoo on my butt cheek, <laughs> or I can tattoo a Spartan doing a heart sign that says it reads Spartan on the streets. Over in the sheets. <laughs> so please make Captain Chaos but your canvas. And I'll have the bread to say <laughs> that my ass have taken us places. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> nice, nice. So um what have you been watching, Captain Chaos? Me, bro. Honestly, I was watching Princess Mononoke. Uh, the other day, it's not sci-fi, really. Well, finally, see sci-fi for you. I don't know. It, uh, she's got that flying skiff thing that she stands on. That's pretty sci-fi. Isn't it? it well, no, I'm 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 mixing up with Norseker and the Valley of the Wind. Sorry. Okay. Oh Different yeah. Show. Is the Nimbus um, two thousand sci-fi? Uh what? <laughs> Yeah, it's fueled by mana, which is fully scientific. 
is made <laughs> on a hydrogen collider in Switzerland. There you go. It's using the quantum mechanic theory. Exactly. So. <laughs> That's how they're powered. No freaking Bugatti. Oh, God. <laughs> I, I actually watched the rest of Memories um, the other night. Oh, um, nice. The second you and third like parts. The one of the fours? The one of the what? The one that the guy had like a smell coming off of him. Oh, <laughs> funny, right? You you pretty much told me the entire plot of that one, so it was no surprise. But I was like, oh Jesus, hey. he's a scientist, <laughs> and he can't even work out the cause and effect. He's just an idiot. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, he should be a janitor, not a scientist. My like, fuck's sake. Oh wow! Oh, it's following me. Oh, oh, it's chasing me. Oh, everywhere I go, it's there. Well, actually. <laughs> What a hint. Ray Ray remind me of uh, there's a movie that someone uh, my brother asked me to watch. It's called On a Wing on a Prayer. It's based on a real life story where pilots uh, um, died and the passengers had to fly the airplane down. And um, it, it, and the reason why I said Ray reminded me of that is because when I was watching this movie, I was just doing this all throughout the movie. Mm-hmm. Because you know, you know that they just completely stupid. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong; the movie was really good. Um, it, 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 but you know, if you never flew a general aviation plane before, uh, you'll probably be scared of flying it. And yeah. just know from <laughs> from my comments here that none of the stuff in the movie is actually true. Um. Uh, the way that it was displayed, it was made to be, um, you know, it's a movie. They exaggerate things for the shock value of it. So mm. I was just like, oh. <laughs> no. uh, before we move on, I've got two things to add. The first one is um, I was listening to a light novel audio book, mm -hmm. um, which is basically a rom-com set in, you know, high school in Japan, because that's where they're all set. Uh, but actually, rather than having the oblivious uh, oblivious rom-com protagonist, this guy actually knows how to read people. He's almost like Sherlock Holmes. Like oh, he wow. knows what everyone else is thinking. What's, what's the and, name of it? Um, it's called, let, let me just get this correct. But it's completely it opposite to what, everything else, which is beautiful because I'm so sick of all these oblivious rom-com protagonists. It's like, is every guy in Japan just as thick as a six wetsuits? <laughs> and and it's just like, no, they're not. From Toxic Classmate to Girlfriend Goals is the name of the series. Oh. Because the because the female the female lead is she she's really shy and to keep people at arm's length, she just like gets really like snarky and nasty. And he can read her like a book. So, like, she's being nasty to him and he's like, yeah, yeah, whatever. You know, I really like you. Because he's completely open about everything. Like, he, 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 you know how all the protagonists are always like, oh, I can't tell them how I feel and I get all embarrassed and rah, rah, rah. No, this guy's like, yeah, I really like you. <laughs> and she's like. <laughs> <laughs> so so she, she's, she's more like your normal, like, female lead. But he's complete, like. Imagine Sherlock Holmes in a rom com, and basically <laughs> that's what you oh, got. Wow. It's good, it's really different. So, I've been really enjoying that. And the other question I want to ask is, um, Robert, have you read any of my re recent writing yet that I sent you? Not yet, because it's sci fi, like seriously, it's sci -fi. not yet. Uh, so. I don't know if uh, if Geo has the link. Um, uh, oh, I should, I should drop it off to Geo as well. Yeah, it's in it on Discord. Yeah. I thought it was on Discord. Uh, I think I might have PM'd it to you. Oh, okay, okay. So I should PM it to Gio. Gio hasn't been around much because he's been busy working. But yeah, yeah. I'll uh, I'll have to work for the weekend. It's it's, it's <laughs> a work it's a working guy. Yeah, he's a busy boy. <laughs> Bro, we're putting the the coils for this AC unit of the at four. Mm. The small one was like two hundred pounds. Oh wow. <laughs> The engine, the motor of the turbine, that thing is like this size. It's like 350, 400 pounds. Like you have to carry like one step at a time. Holy crap. 
I, I hope you're wearing a, a like a, a back brace or something because I, I, I do that. I, I stand up properly. If not, I don't do it. Yeah, but there's there's back. stuff you can there's something you can buy to protect your back. Um, oh, yeah. I remember my brother used to work at the airport when we were like teenagers. Um, you know the 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 baggage, and uh, he he actually bought one of those, and uh, it, it, he just wore it throughout the time that he was working at the airport. Um, and he said it's you know it's the best thing. It, it protects your back. Like you, you know what else protects your back? Huh? Being fit. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> That too. So, I'm gonna get back into lifting. I, I this flu kicked the hell out of me. I haven't been lifting for weeks, so I got to get back into it. So you guys are ready for uh, the first segment? Shout outs. <laughs> yeah. We are science fiction remnant. This is the funny science fiction podcast. <laughs> we are the Caribbean Science Fiction Network. We are Monorats. We are One Accord Level 2 Podcast. This is Jesse from Sudden But Inevitable and Open Pike Night. This is sci-fi. And you know the drill, like uh, Captain Chaos likes to hear. This <laughs> is sci-fi. The hashtag was designed to help you share your love for sci-fi. So if you're listening to the show, you're probably like us. You love sci-fi and you probably have a couple of shows that you absolutely adore and you want to share um so my invitation to you as a fan if you have a show you love if you're a creator if you have a sh uh, anything that you are creating that is sci-fi related follow and um and post to the hashtag this is sci-fi and that way you could help share and, and, and all the love for sci-fi that you have for people that, you know, you might not otherwise know about the stuff you like. And uh, if you follow us on, on the hashtag, if you follow the hashtag, you'll discover that there is um, the factor of discovery, which I absolutely love. And it, it, it ranges all the way from very obscure IPs to mainstream IPs like Star Trek and um, Star um, Star Wars, and as as you know, those main IPs, they have a lot of different shows, which I totally love. It it helps on the immersion within that universe. So yeah. <clears throat> you might know of the main movies, right? But there might be some show that you might not know that is actually there. I actually heard of people that are big fans of Star Trek and have not seen Strange New Worlds. So it, it, it might be shocking to others, but I have seen so much of this that it doesn't surprise me. So don't let that big IP distract you from the fact that, you know, oh, should I share it? Should I not share it? Share it. Because you'll never know who actually have not seen and might be intrigued to watch based on your comment and your passion. Yeah. So <clears throat> do you guys have anything to add um, through for this week for the This Is Sci-Fi hashtag? I was just going to say that um, somewhat like uh, Robert and um, Space Truckers, um, not having seen it before. Exactly. And only finding out about it thanks to, well, sort of thanks to the hashtag, but also thanks to the podcasts so yeah well, I, I would have yep. to say the hashtag because a lot of people um and 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 you you guys if you're listening and you follow the hashtag you you'll know by by going through the feed that there's a lot of people that have actually mentioned that on on the feed and they wanted us to do it <clears throat> and uh, i don't know why we decided i have no idea what how it ended up that we said you know what we're going to do it um maybe you know not to say thing can happen, but with, uh, <clears throat> Babylon Five. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so um, we just decided to do it. So, but it, it it was all over the hashtag um, where people were saying, you know, you you guys should do it. So, so we did it. 
<laughs> well, I'd, I'd, I'd like this movie for a long time, but the only scene that I could remember was the um, the pool start penis. But <laughs> oh, my God, that is I'd, I'd forgotten how snappy the dialogue was in this movie. I was pleasantly <laughs> reminded about it. Oh, yeah. Uh, Gio, do you have anything that you want to point out for This Is Sci-Fi? If not, we can just move on. I mean, I mean just to close the statement... Uh... It's it's great to maintain that sci-fi conversation in depth that you like to keep on going, but it's not like, I mean, to me, it doesn't feel like you can go to anybody and just have that conversation, you know. But when you go to this is sci-fi, it's more fun conversation. Yeah. yeah. So keep sharing and keep giving your thoughts, guys, and, and keep it alive. Um, I've got something that falls under the hashtag to uh, announce. Okay. Um, well, uh, it's been big news in the last 24 hours on Twitter that um, uh, Robert Rodriguez, um, uh, John Landau, uh, James Cameron, and um, and um, my brain doesn't want to work, um, Rosa Salazar are in discussions with Disney about Alita 2. <laughs> and if you guys are not watching our video <clears throat> on YouTube, I strongly recommend you guys go and subscribe because if you all know, we are part of the Alita Army and nothing would make us happier than having a part two for the Alita movie. So I was dancing. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we were all dancing. <laughs> That is great news. But yeah, um, it's um, it's not, it's not a, it's not a hard confirmation of a sequel. Mm -hmm. But they, they, you know, the, the the gears are turning, and you know, <coughs> excuse me, Cameron is the only guy who's really made Disney bank recently. Um, so not listening to him is like stupid. Yeah. So uh, hopefully Disney will come to the party. We'll see what happens. Yeah, look at Avatar. Come on, Disney, chop chop. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, Gio, anything else or should we move on? Shout outs. Okay, so we are going to move to the next segment. Shout outs. Well, everybody, for this first and most, I want to remember everybody that we're part of the Blind Knowledge Network. Blind Knowledge Network. Go check them out. You can fucking... You can, oh, bro. I feel uh, feedback. Um, I don't know. Can you hear it? No. <laughs> and Captain Chaos wouldn't be Captain Chaos if he wasn't for the technical difficulties. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Well, I'm going to have to concentrate without that delay. Okay, let's see. Uh... <laughs> you could actually turn off um, on... Uh, let's see. No, actually, you're not even on. I was going <laughs> to say. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, well, so as I was saying, we're part of the Blind Knowledge Network. You can go and check them out. They have a website, blindknowledgenetwork.com. And you can find them on all social media platforms. They have a great variety of creators and creators uh, of all flavors. So go and check them out. And that you find something that you like this. Now, to our shout out, first to Ely Zimmerman, who always keep on giving us good things and conversations, disagreeing agreement with other men, keep on bringing those thoughts. I mean, I think that the most beautiful thing about all this is that we are actually really interested in understanding each other and evolve together. I think that that's. So so yeah, keep it going. I, I I like to add to that, and um, I, I want to say uh, a big thanks to uh, Ely Zimmerman. By the way, uh, he is the writer of sci-fi um, uh, sci-fi history .net. Um, he actually read our latest article, and I actually, if you are actually watching us through YouTube, you can just scan the QR code. Uh, if you're listening to us, just go into sciencefictionremnant.com, click on the blog 
menu icon and you'll see all our articles. Uh, the last article that I wrote uh, is about Event Horizon. Uh, and I just want to add that he actually read the article uh, and he, he said that, you know, he may not agree with the take with my take on Event Horizon, but that is why I, you know, always say to each its own. Um, and, and the reason why I want to point this out is like, it, it is amazing. And, and I really appreciate that because if you actually follow this show in season one, me and Gio doesn't really, you know, we didn't agree on a 100% of the of, of the topics that we're talking about. And if you're listening to season two, you will know that that is true with all three between uh, Ray, uh, Captain Chaos, and me. So what I always say is, <clears throat> it is perfectly fine to disagree. That is okay. It's awesome. I mean, everything in it, um, I just agree. With you too, and I'm right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, 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 it's actually it's I really appreciate it because if it wasn't for those kinds of conversations, you would not be exposed to a different perspective on a topic. Yeah. You only have one perspective, is what it says inside your head. You might not agree with the other comment for the other person, but you do gain a new perspective. And I yeah. love that. Uh, wh what do you guys, what do you think, Ray, on that? Um... Oh, totally. I mean, look, life isn't about your own perspective. There's so many other perspectives. And, you know, when when you're young, you, you get a perspective and you hang on to it for grim death because you don't have the experience to understand that there's more out there. But, you know, as you go through life and you get more experience and you see that, you know, there's as many different ways to live and experience things as there are people on the on the planet, then you, you start understanding that, that the way other people experience things is also valuable to you and you start um, respecting different opinions, even if you don't necessarily agree with them. So eventually, hopefully, you um, come to appreciate other people's opinions and and sometimes uh you'll you'll have a conversation with somebody about a thing that you hold a particular opinion on by the time mm -hmm. you get to the end of that conversation your opinion has changed yeah. so yeah so uh, i mean yeah n nothing's set in stone and your experience is only one of you know many 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 different options and variations and perspectives so um yeah en enjoy the other perspectives as well yeah and I think just to close on what Ray is saying, uh, like it's not being predisposed to just the curiosity of listening to others, you know, at all. Yeah. So b before Captain Chaos continues, I uh, just want to uh, point out uh, one more time. Um, you can find all these articles if you are listening, if you're watching us on YouTube, which you should subscribe, help us out. Um, you can just scan the QR code, um, click on the blog icon, and you can read all our articles. Um, if you are listening to us right now, uh, the website is sciencefictionremnant.com. Uh, you go to the menu, click on blog, and you can read all our articles. Uh, just remember, you can reach out to us and have uh, conversations about the articles. We're really curious to see what are your thoughts on the articles that we have written. Um, you could actually go to our Discord. Uh, if you are watching us on YouTube, you can scan the QR code and it'll take us to the invite for the Discord channel. Uh, if you are uh, listening to this pod, you might wanna go into the uh, uh, show description and there should be a invite link uh, on there. So basically what I have done in the Discord channel is I actually have a forum where I actually post each one of those uh, technically links to all those articles just to help the uh, engage the conversation. So if you have any questions, you will definitely find the articles there and we can start a conversation and, and just let me know what you think. Let me know what you agree, what you disagree. Uh, like, I, like we just spoke, we love to hear your perspective, even if you disagree with the article. So go ahead, Gio. Um. Well, moving on, I want to mention also a new follower that we have. Uh, he's participating a lot in our conversations 
uh, for giving the support for the retweet. Thank you so much. B. Harrison, and his uh, handle is Harrison Smith. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Kelly sends Yorgi, one of our favorite fans. Kelly. And you guys can go check her out. She's a great discussion on the top of her. Yes. Uh, Anti bottle. That's her uh, Twitter tag. Act. Go check her out. Go check her out. Last but not least, Open Pike Night. Open Pike. And Open Pike. Great podcast. The supporters that we have to. If you guys, if you guys are watching Strange New Worlds, um, and you're not listening to Open Pike. Why are you waiting for? <laughs> That's what Robert goes and he's like, oh, yeah, how to put his wife. That's great. They are, you know, since <laughs> since they are waiting for season two to come in, uh, which I can't wait. Um, they're kind of doing uh, some episodes on rewatch on on the old TOS. Um, they uh, or not necessarily, you know, just the old TOS, but they're they're basically just recently. Uh, doing episodes on previous Star Trek episodes that kind that, that they feel match uh, on getting prepared for season two based on the trailer that was just released from Paramount Plus. So if you not necessarily Star Trek, I mean it, it's it's obviously if you like Star Trek you want to listen to, but if especially if you love Strange New World and you're not listening to Open Pike, you're doing yourself a disservice. And um, Admiral Funniest Frontier. Admiral Funniest Frontier, Dex Lower. Dex Lower. One of my favorite Trek shows, Lower Dex. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's funny, bro. <laughs> oh, yes. Great taste. Okay. Yeah, that's it, man. So we're going to go into the next segment. The Outer Run. And hey, Gio, where have you been? At work, bro. <laughs> I have been at work too. <laughs> oh God, I've been at work. Um, Ray, where have you been? Uh, well, let me guess. Let me see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Where's my, where's my notes? Here it is. So. <laughs> Yeah, uh, so uh, as everybody should know by now, and if you don't, why don't you know? Um, uh, I'm one of the hosts of Radio Chaos. Um, I've been off the last couple of weeks with the flu, so I haven't been able to uh, host uh, because, you know, coughing every couple of minutes and disrupting the stream wouldn't be cool. So I left things up to my co-host, Angelus. But um, uh, I was back on the... Sorry, what? Making you laugh is great. It no, it's not. Face. No, really, really. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I can mostly laugh now. Uh, but um, yeah, the, my lungs weren't good there for a couple of weeks. Uh, thankfully, it wasn't COVID, though. It was just the flu. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, I was back on board for the um, most recent Saturday, uh, which was Radio Chaos 160. And the uh, topic was, is anyone good enough for a liter? And if so, who? Uh, we had some very interesting conversations there. Uh, in the uh, sort of vein of uh, characters in the story, uh, other characters um, from other IPs, and then, of course, people from the Elite Army who thought that they'd like to line up and, uh, and um, you know, stand next to Alita, which, um, you know, is keen of them, i got to say. <laughs> somewhat brave in fact uh but yeah um so uh, that was an interesting discussion so you can check that one out on the elite army uh, official channel which is um hashtag elite army on youtube and it's radio chaos episode 160. so yeah it's been awesome. kicking around for a few years now but um hopefully we'll have good things to discuss very shortly can't wait oh, yeah. mm. can't wait Hey, um, if uh, if they uh, break the news of uh, a green light for the sequel, you guys are going to come on uh, on the live stream and party it up with us. We oh, should, yeah. we should do a party. Oh yeah. So, are we ready for this? 
was boring. Fun, <laughs> fun movie. <laughs> I cannot believe that you hadn't seen it before, Robert. I mean, I thought you were all over the breadth and width of sci-fi. Yeah, yeah. I, I yeah. yeah. It's one of those um, one of those movies that are I, I just actually discovered, and I don't know if I mentioned this before or was just for the Patreons. Um, I actually discovered that I had this movie a multiple list. So I, I think what happens is when I remember, I was like, okay, let me add it here so I don't forget. And then I am somewhere else and I'm like, oh, it's not here. Oh, let me add it so I don't forget. And since this has been on my list for such a, a long time, it eventually got its way around my multiple list. So I think I couldn't find one list that this movie wasn't in. Well, I put it on the list for the podcast as well and then pushed <laughs> it up near the top so you'd see it. <laughs> it wasn't, this is sci-fi hashtag, is an art trillo. Yeah, it got to every list. So I think that's the reason why I was forced to, uh, you know, watch it. It reached um, critical mass and you had to uh, yeah. accept that it existed. Yeah. It, I mean, it, it, it it's one of those movies that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't a big budget. It wasn't like, you know, it's not, it's not an aliens. It's not a predator. It's not a event horizon, but it is, it is a sci-fi movie. And I feel <laughs> like, I feel like at least the writers put a lot into it. Um, mm. The the special effects weren't great, but they weren't terrible. They were serviceable. Um, and it, it had a good adventurous story and lots of stuff happened. Mm. And it had likable characters and some really cliched characters, but... Um, Orny, corny <laughs> as hell. Yeah. The, the science yeah. was in the right direction. It was. It was you know, we'll it's, it's not necessarily be accurate, but it was in the right direction. Yeah. <laughs> at times they at times they they worked hard on the science, and at other times they went, ah, fuck it. <laughs> Just do whatever we want. <laughs> so, I had so, an I have an important question though. Mm -hmm. A very important question for Ray. Yeah. And, uh, do we have the plot? Yeah, we have the plot. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what I do with that Wikipedia, but we have the plot. <laughs> you find a back noodle uh? plot. Back noodles plot. Uh, oh <laughs> man, that is the dream, you know. That is the dream. Yeah, see the, the old bad noodles plot. Yeah, no, I yeah. don't have a bad noodles plot, sorry. Uh, but I do have the plot. Shall we do the plot? Yeah, go ahead and do the plot. <clears throat> okay. At a corporation's base on the Neptunian moon T Triton, mercenaries are setting up a defense perimeter to try and hold off an unstoppable cyborg warrior. The company's CEO, E.J. Sags, and chief scientist, Dr. Naval, seal themselves inside the control room. The cyborg destroys the soldiers' tanks and then attacks the helicopter, which crashes into the control room. The soldiers are killed one by one until Naval finally deactivates the cyborg with a remote control. The remaining corporate employees discover that the cyborg was created by Nabel for the company. Sags takes the remote and reactivates the cyborg, ordering it to kill Nabel. This is after he finds out that they've got 5,000 of the things. So he doesn't need Nabel anymore. Meanwhile, John Canyon, one of the last independent space truckers, drops off his cargo of square pigs. Yes, you heard right, square pigs. <laughs> They're uh, all at <laughs> it was, wasn't it? It was like taking battery hens and just taking it to the next level. Yeah. Um, a, a truck stop space station, but becomes embroiled in a brawl with the trucking company head Keller, who is sucked out into space. He and two passengers, Cindy, the waitress who was promised to marry him in exchange for a ride to Earth to see her mother, and Mike, an up-and-coming truck trucking worker for the company, take on a deal to transport alleged sex dolls to Earth. <laughs> Chased by police. Why would you build sex dolls out near Jupiter and then transport them to Earth? It just seems a little bit... Hmm. You know why? Why? As long as I was, that ass is from out of this world. Oh, okay. But you could just make them at the moon. They'd be, they'd be a lot closer. Chased by police investigating Keller's death, John takes his rig into the scum zone, a region controlled by pirates. 
The rig takes damage, leaving them adrift, and they are soon captured by the pirate ship Regalia, commanded by the company-hating Captain Macanudo. Bloody strange name. Cindy agrees to have sex with him if he would take the cargo and let them go. The captain is revealed to be Nabel, who has rebuilt his grievously injured body and went into piracy as revenge against Sags for betraying him. The cargo that John's rig is carrying is in fact the full supply of cyborg warriors Nabel designed and built for Sags' company. One of the cyborgs activates, kills most of the crew and severely damages the ship. John, Cindy and Mike take their rig and escape as the regalia explodes. As they make their way back to Earth, John and Mike find the mortally wounded Makinodo in the hold, who reveals the true nature of the cargo to them. John releases Cindy from any obligation of marrying him and tells her and Mike to take the escape pod while he releases the cargo in the atmosphere where it will burn up on re-entry. Cindy and Mike land safely, but the rig is unable to return to space and explodes in the sky. However, John is able to safely escape before the explosion and... Um, parachutes down to the ground john cindy and mike go to the hospital to see cindy's mother who became sick 20 years earlier and was frozen until a cure was found john is smitten with her at first sight meanwhile sags now president of the earth after government was privatized visits john cindy and mike at the hospital where he offers john a new rig and gives him a suitcase full of money to keep them quiet about the cyborg invasion plan John agrees to the deal, but Mike angrily throws the suitcase out the window. Below, Sags re-enters his presidential limousine, having planted a bomb in the suitcase. He triggers the detonator just as the suitcase lands on his limousine roof, killing him. With Sags dead um, and Earth safe, Mike, Cindy, John, and Cindy's mother blast off in their new rig for more adventures unknown. Roll credits. Hmm... That is the plot. I, I have. I'm going to ask the first question, mm -hmm. and I'm first going to thought. go. And I'm going to go first. First thoughts. Basically, how old were you when you watched this for the first time, and what was your first impression? It was last week for me. <laughs> I feel almost ashamed. Uh, and regret <laughs> that I haven't seen this earlier oh, uh, wow. <laughs> because the longer you watch the you know obviously I'm gonna be re-watching this um it was a fun movie it was really fun um I like how they at least gave it a try when it comes to the science um it wasn't 100% accurate, obviously. Well, you know, if you think about it technically, what sci-fi is. However, you could tell they did an attempt to, to do the science right. Um, one of the things that I noticed right off the bat, the very beginning, it, it reminded me of The Expanse. And I wonder if a Geo would agree with my statement when I finished. Uh, and by the way, if, for you, yeah. if you have for not you. <laughs> listened to our episode on The Expanse um, and Season 1, you should go ahead and download it. Uh, great show. But um, towards the beginning, when he is putting his boots, their magnetic boots, and he's walking, um, you know, through the hallway on his ship, uh, which actually leads to the... Um, <clears throat> Um, the, the, the actual station where he's actually docked in. Um, it's, it wasn't 100%, you know, there, but you could tell, you could tell how they're making the, the effort. Um, uh, I was actually watching this with my wife and she's wondering why he has four hands. And I said, <laughs> no, they're not four hands. He has his two hands, but the, the suit that he had on, he has it halfway through. Through the uh, you know his his uh, uh, waist, uh, but because there's no gravity, the the arms on the suit they're kind of flying around. So it looks like he's walking around with four four limbs. Uh, but if you pay attention to the way that he is walking, 
uh, you can kind of sense how uh, the magnetic boots are actually working. So he's he's walking on metal with metal um, boots, and they're attracting metal. So he's kind of walking through. So that's just an example of what I noticed on that on this movie that really really called my attention. And and throughout the whole movie, it's kind of like that. Um, the, the the science might not be right there, but you could definitely see that they're doing an effort uh, throughout the entire movie. Um, who wants to go next? I'll go next. I'll go next. <laughs> okay. I'll be sure. It was a fun movie. I will not repeat it. <laughs> I think that... Blasphemy. I think that... Yeah, no. I think that the movie shows so much potential and they just love play. They kind of done such a great movie. When was the first time yeah. you saw this? What, with you, bro. Oh, so we're we're the newbies. So we bo yeah. both have different opinions. Both right? of you, my God! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, the delivers the message, but like too corny for my taste. They overkill the the old man with the other dog. They overkill him, man. <laughs> but other than that, you got a good laugh, laugh out of it. It's a fun movie. See how interesting it is. We agree to disagree. I would rewatch. Gio would not. And now we're waiting for Ray. Well, I'm just going through the um, through the wiki here, and I'll just um, I'll just say that the um, the consensus of humankind in 1996 was very similar to Gio, <laughs> in that um, <laughs> Space Truckers was poorly received by critics, with a review aggravator Rotten Tomatoes. Rating the film at 15%. 15. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, it was a box office bomb earning $2 million against this $25 million budget. Isn't it this movie a cult classic right now? It, it is. It never received a United States theatrical release. Wow. But it went straight to cable television and home video. Yeah, there, there is a following. Uh, there is a cult following in this movie. Yeah, I mean, I definitely understand why it 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 wasn't given the treatment it deserved. It did what it didn't even have a theatrical release, so it makes it very hard to earn its money back. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I saw this, I saw this in the mid late nineties um, on VHS, and it it's VHS. much in the same vein as a lot of other sci fi movies around that era, like um, Ice Pirates and Battle Beyond the Stars. And those sorts of things where, you know, after the big releases of like Star Wars and um, and uh, Battlestar Galactica and things like that, you know, sci-fis that were given the money to make a, a good fist of the story and were given room to breathe. Uh, a lot of smaller companies tried to replicate the success with a much smaller budget and even though they put a lot of effort into it, it didn't have the backing that the big shows had, Star Wars, Star Trek, mm -hmm. um, Battlestar Galactica. Um, so they didn't get the, the release width that they should have, and therefore they weren't very well known and they didn't make their money back. And it was sort of like, like the plug hole. Um, all these smaller releases just went down the plug hole because they weren't given a chance to breathe and a chance to um, to reach their full potential. As I mentioned in the pre-show, uh, I thought that the movie had serviceable special effects. Um, it had uh, good writing in in the uh, dialogue portion. Mm -hmm. It had, as you said, a lot of attempts at doing reasonable to good science. Uh, the thing that I most struck me on a rewatch was the fact that they went into the space station and you could look up and see people standing on the outer rotating section further around and their heads are pointed at you because they're on the outer rotating section and the floor basically curves upwards in either direction. I really like that. It was, okay. it was highly accurate for a rotational gravity habitat mm -hmm. 
And yeah, I mean, I I really quite enjoyed that. You know, that was a thing, and they didn't they didn't lean into it all. It was just the way it was, and they just treated it like normal, which is what it is what it would be in a rotational habitat. So, um, kudos to them for that. Um, and then you get things like the truck doing a ninety degree turn out of the space lane. Uh, which wait, 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 uh, wait, a, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. You mean that's not uh, realistic? No, not even in the slightest. Oh. I mean, I thought I thought the design of having like um, uh, ha having a oh. a header vehicle that pulls uh, a chain of of um, uh, of trailers made a lot of sense, and the way they designed them so that the engines were offset to where the the containers were so the containers were arranged in sort of a, a a y shape as a cross section and then the engines of the truck were in those gaps which makes a whole lot of sense although you'd still get a lot of heating from the side venting of the of the engines yeah. along the edges of the first container and of course if it was turning as sharply as it was which is that could quite, be bad quite impossible uh but yeah you know if it was plasma or some other sort of highly ionized radiation drive you could really screw up your your load um no point but, intended. yeah uh it was it was um was quite reminiscent of alien in that you had a space tug pulling a massive um refinery through space I was, was doing the refining while it was pulling the station. And it reminded me of Alien in, in that fashion. I was, a, a I was smaller... talking to Gio about yeah. that but before you move on, mm -hmm. um, how they had the containers arranged. And I thought that was really, really clever. Um, if, if you look right now at a, at a truck container, just visualize this um, connected in a form. So it forms kind of like a triangle. So you have three. Um, it actually really works for space. Um, if you're traveling, I mean, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to keep the containers in a row like you would do on a truck. Uh, but it makes sense that you can make universal, the already universal uh, first order of choice transportation worldwide, which is containers. Exactly. So, to, so I mean, we have containers today. And so it makes it very simple to just build some sort of, uh, um, you know, holder that would just grab the containers, the, the, yeah. the same containers you have today and, and, and be able to ship. You know, obviously we have the, the, the issue of space. So the, the, you wouldn't be able to use the containers we use now. They probably have to be yeah. redesigned uh, unless you really don't mind that, you know, maybe the, the stuff that is inside doesn't really need air. Um, yeah. then in that case, you could use those. Uh, but I just find that, and I was kind of curious, that's why I was to comment on that, Ray, because I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts on that. I thought it was really clever. Yeah, I know. It, it feels like an evolution of the same technology that we're using today, and it makes sense. Um, and I also like the way, you know, they're walking along in magnetic boots on the floor of the cab, and then they go into the into the Y-shaped um, uh, sort of mounting for the containers and they actually walked along and then they had to rotate slightly to walk along a bit further because of the Y shape. So rather than the floor being here, it was it was more like like that and they, they actually had to turn partially sideways and just keep walking. Mm -hmm. And I really liked that. That was little details that made it feel a lot more logical and a lot more like you know somebody had thought hard about this um mm -hmm. but and you know things like they were eating it out of microwave um uh basically big toothpaste tubes e egg, um, eggs and uh, cappuccino yeah <laughs> saliva activated eggs and cappuccino Wow. Now the flavor doesn't hit until it touches saliva, which makes a lot of uh, sense. I was asking my wife but, to one of those. But you, they they did that and it that made a lot of sense because I mean they eat out of tubes on the International Space Station right now. So yeah. that's actually functionally accurate. But then he gets down a cooler and they get out beers and they crack them open and it doesn't float out the top. 
does it? They yeah. just drink in them like like it was in under gravity. So you know, for what one scene doing? they're doing serious like space sites, and the next scene is like fucking have a beer. It's just like, we don't care. It, it's beer, you know. It beer just beer. behaves itself. Beer, you know. <laughs> it doesn't need to float around, right? <laughs> That'll be interesting experience. Yeah. But I mean that the story Apart hung from... together reasonably well in, in that there was nothing that was there, there was no massive plot holes. There was nothing that made me sit back and go, well, that's just stupid. Um but... the the bad guy was comically um comically bad. Uh <laughs> and in, in a sort of a, a British mm. you know, carry on kind of sexual bad way. Um, the scene where he's attempting to have sex with the girl so that they, they release and having having the pool start penis that he built himself and and it broke down at the worst possible moment and he had to repair it. The electronic uh, dysfunction. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, wow. my God, you, you. Wow. But, I mean, they'd really thought hard about how to make that, you know, like, Scenes where somebody's forced to have sex is not pleasant, but this was just comical. Yes. In how but bad it was. <laughs> and then the fact that she could put his cap, glasses, and coat on, and they couldn't tell it was her. Again, <laughs> yes. that, because that, why not? Yeah, why not? You I think why? maybe they all have really bad eyesight because of the gamma radiation. It I don't sense. know. It makes sense because the intimidation that he had on his crew. Wouldn't even look at him. Well, you know, I, I would I would say yes because you tend not to look him in the eye because you're afraid. However, he was taller. Yeah. So I yeah, think it was like you know, I think like, you could tell that. Uh, well, in fight or flight mode, if you're like scared of a tyrant, you're not thinking. You're just like in follow mode. You know, so think about the intimidation. Uh, tactics that they will have as a group. They, yeah. they don't even look at him. Unless, uh, and it was dark, so everything. Let, it was like, you, okay. Let, let me you know. Go ahead. I was just going to say, but you, but you know, if I had a truck full of murder robots that were going to take over the world and I didn't want them to, turning turning the entire thing around and using the um, the, the trailers as like a heat shield to come into the atmosphere and destroying them that way was the most sensible thing to do. It was like, that's what you would do. You would burn them up in the atmosphere so that they didn't. Um, Will that happen? Trash. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. None would have make it to nope. the atmosphere. Nope. <laughs> no. the, the, basically, they would have turned to plasma. Um, Re-entry is you, freaking you hot. you have to manage to bring such a large trailer. Well, let me, uh, Ray, let me try to, uh, let me attempt to explain that in a different sure. way. And you let me know if I explained it right. Um, we know air is a liquid. Well, yeah, technically not, but it's, it behaves like a liquid, right? So, Gio, what happens when you grab your two palms and rub them together real fast? Like really, I'm really fast. My atom. Really, really faster, faster. They heat up, they heat up. They heat up, right? So imagine something going through air really fast. That friction that you have in your hands is the same friction that the air would have against the surfaces of that, of that uh, spaceship. So going so fast, it, it would eventually heat up and melt the... the, the, the the metal because there's no protected surfaces if you look at the space shuttle for example that's why they have those tiles yeah um so no. if they come out upside down they're in trouble they have to come why? through those tiles why that didn't happen to joe kittinger or felix but uh felix something brown i think um, that they didn't jump from outer space Okay, let, let me put it to you another way, Gio. Do you remember the Columbia Space Shuttle disaster? Yeah. 
that was caused by a piece of foam off of um, one of the boosters, or maybe it was the fuel tank, knocking a few of the heat tiles off the bottom of the shuttle. So having lost just a few of the tiles, it was enough to burn a hole in the space shuttle on re-entry and blow the thing up. Damn. That is just losing a couple of heat tiles. Now, these containers are not designed to, for re-entry. They um, don't have a heat shield. They burnt up. So, just to, to trace it back, if they have been heat protected, they yeah. would make it Maybe. I mean, you've, there's a couple of things you need for re-entry to survive it. The first thing is a way to protect yourself, protect your cargo from the heat. The second thing is a way to decelerate because gravity, although it is a weak force, once it's been working on you for a while, you reach terminal velocity. If you aren't slowed down, when you hit a solid surface and water is a solid surface when you're going that fast because of water tension, um, poof. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. There's nothing left. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm being devil okay here. Like you can have a set of like heavy duty uh, parachutes on the containers, and they will come like in rounds. So like one round, boom, this generation one, second round, and then let's go of them. Or they just do all together to make a third one. I suspect the plan was to dock at an orbital facility. And either the, the containers are transferred to a um, uh, orbital elevator or some yeah. other system to get them down to the planet. Um, but, you know, they may have activated once they got to the orbital facility and taken over shuttles to get down to Earth. But they, they I don't think those containers were designed for reentry. I, I, I agree with that. Uh, Ray, I have a question for you, and, and, and only for you, because I want to hear the comments from, from uh, Captain Chaos. Could you agree that this movie is either campy or slightly campy? <laughs> you think? <laughs> the reason why I'm asking... Is because our very own Captain Chaos here has an issue with campy. Ah. Not although he has surprised me, there has been some campy movies that he actually likes. So I'm not, you know. But Rio, Gio, do you think that the reason why, you know, you still agree that the movie was fun? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it was not I your not cup of. That. I'm sorry. I did not deny that it was a fun movie. Yeah. Um, However, it, it's not your cup of tea. Do you think that that is because it was a campy movie? Or would you say that you probably watch this again, but not necessarily right away? I don't know if I will watch it again. Like, I could watch it again. Like, if friends are watching it. Mm -hmm. right. Or my choice, like, oh, let me look for that movie. Maybe not. Like, oh, okay. Like, I loved it, but it's like one of those movies, like, yeah, you should watch it once. You know, it's fun. Yeah. It's I, American Pie. Like, I never ever watched them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was just, I was just curious because, I mean, you can make the same arguments with me and horror movies. Um, yeah. I can tell you right off the bat, I don't have a problem watching horror movies. I don't like horror movies. But if you, add, if you add sci fi to it, that might be a different story. Then some magical way it doesn't matter that people are being gutted and I mean have a shit. <laughs> but don't you kill the puppy? <laughs> um what do you guys think about those robots? Um oh god, great sex robots. The, the, <laughs> the sex dolls. Um horrifying, bro. I I I actually and the reason why I'm asking this is because all of us here love anime. So I learned, you know, doing some some slight research, uh, research for this movie, that uh, the robots were actually designed 
or a Japanese illustrator. Um, I'm probably gonna destroy his name. I, I do apologize. Um, I, you might know who this person is. I honestly don't. Um, Hajime Sorayama, um, which is a an illustrator that is known for his precise detail on hand-painted portrayals of women and feminine robots. And robots with scrotum. F uh, feminine. feminine. <laughs> so the reason why I'm bringing this up is because throughout the movie, my wife kept on saying, um, are these, they're females inside those, those suits, right? And I'm like, it's not expressed in the movie. I mean, for, for, you know, they're supposed to the be balls? robots. They're supposed to be robots. What are the balls? <laughs> <laughs> you have balls. You can't deny that. Well, no, those are, those are the, the activation sacks. Throw them, bro. Uh, which, by <laughs> the way, uh, it's, it's a funny thing that the, the, the owner yeah. of all this is named Sax. And mm -hmm. they, have, they have activation sacks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, what do you think about that? I mean, did you guys knew that it was uh, that the, the design was done by he? He actually is known for doing erotic, hand painted portraits of women and feminine robots. Um, no idea, man. Great work. Uh, you, you guys. Uh, now, I mean, let me tell you something. And tell me if you guys agree. The head to me looks like that weapon that the predator has the uh, arm. Mm -hmm. That's what uh, it looks like. Yes. I, I do agree with you. I mean, it's not exactly the same, but um, that's the vibe that I got from these robots. That's some kind of biochemical, uh, like a, a biocomputer, all right? It, I, I think it's half and half, only because of the biosac. Um, but then again, you see the other stuff is, is, is mechanical and metal. But so I think it's a combination. It it. This seems like AI is not intent here. It's being controlled by humans fully. It, it's 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 not AI. It's you program a function, and yeah. and it just does it. Exactly. There's no AI. Well, the AI of the truck. <laughs> yeah, the AI is yeah. in the truck. So I was just I was just wondering. Um, if, if you guys notice that, because, you know, when when my wife brought it up, when we were watching the movie, that's when I started searching because I was kind of curious. Um, did you get that sense, like, uh, Gio, where, where you were looking at these robots and, and did you notice a, a feminine look? Um, I never even noticed no, until she brought it up. Not really, not really. Uh, I try to find, like, what is sexual about this? Just being ironic. Mm -hmm. uh, no, not really. Oh, okay. I, I it's was a very predatory alien look alike. Like it, it looked menacing. Look at that head, bro. Yeah. And I told you, <laughs> it looked like a steroid version of the Republic robots. The ones that had like the little head. <laughs> That's not funny. Those. Uh, Ray, did, like a really did you get that sense when you watched the robots or yeah, the, the design was interesting i didn't really sort of get a feeling that there were there were girls in there but you know maybe the the people who were modeling for the robots wearing the suits were female mm -hmm. i i felt the movements of the robots was quite sort of alien-esque like it reminded me of the aliens from alien um in the way that they moved um, the design was kind of reminiscent of Guyver's in some ways. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the head was very interesting with the three glowy eyes, which, you know, it was very off-putting. And I suppose, you know, if it was lighting up and disintegrating parts of people, it would be very off-putting as well. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, th I thought they were well designed. Yeah, I'm with like the... I'm like Predator, right? Yeah. Um, they had the they had the, the the can openers and everything, um, the the big blades and stuff. Um, I thought they were quite interesting, and it was also interesting the way they showed from the robot's point of view, where it said, you know, do not destroy 
mo method of getting to Earth, so they weren't allowed to trash the the truck um, when they were attacking the the people driving the truck. Um, yeah. The fact that they were activating and sort of going after the people who were transporting them, I thought was a bit sort of detrimental to their cause yeah. in a way. Uh, I, I don't think that the robots would have had the ability to drive the truck. But, um, yeah, it, I mean, the, 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 crate, the, the containers were reacting to them trying to cut into it by activating weapon systems and stuff. So I guess it was a sort of a self-defense mechanism. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I kind of agree with you. I think they should have stopped at the actual trailer, um, knowing that, you know, we, we actually know that they had a command not to destroy the, the mode of transportation. So I found it odd that they, they actually went into the cab and they were attempting to, like, you know, in their point of view, was defending themselves. Um, but, you know, they should have stopped. They were stopped. trespassing. Huh? They were pirates trespassing the shipment. No, no, I'm talking, we're talking about the robots. Yeah, the robots were doing just their, their, the, what they're programmed to do. Yeah. The, I, I, I don't know. I just found that. Oh, and uh, Ray, it's I, a, I did. It's scary. Huh? <laughs> shit. That's scary as shit. What 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 is? That robots like could do th these things. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. The disintegrator weapon. That's yeah. Not only yeah, that, not only that, that if you look at it, it was prioritizing urgency because it will come on waves. Mm -hmm. So like to respond Ray's question, like why didn't really go and attack the handlers of the truck of the shipment? It was because of that, like they were not even attacking. They were the only ones that were not attacking. So... I, you know, you, you do have a point because if we assume that these robots have no AI, then that would be understandable. Because mm -hmm. they they identify, a, you know, a, a an entity that is attacking them and they're going to defend themselves. Um so I, I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm I'm just pushing my understanding of this movie, but it just kind of makes sense uh, in my head. Uh, Ray, I did find out based on your comment on how it was never um, released in the theaters in the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, uh, I found out that they they were having issues finding a distributor. Ah. Uh. Um, and they just couldn't find a distributor at all so it actually premiered in hbo so i, I find that really interesting you know I, I i would love to know what happened you know um it, it's just i find it kind of curious i, I got by this for you mm. you know what shows they took away from hbo and i don't find it anyway mm. westworld it's gone. It's gone? Yes. Really? I don't find it anywhere, bro. Did they cancel it or? No, like they just took it out of the, <laughs> the HBO completely. It's oh, original. No. The movie's still there. But the show, gone. Wow. HBO is just changing its name now. It's going to be just Max. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Wow. Maybe it's going in real science, bro. The maybe is rising is just maybe they're moving their properties to the new uh to, to the new streaming service. That that's might be it right there. No, no, no. It doesn't show in HBO anymore. Nowhere. I don't know everywhere online, man. That's interesting. I'll, I'll send you the article. Oh <laughs> I was you know, it, it was bugging me that conversation that we're having about, you know, the robots being, you know, the, were they fe really females? So <laughs> I, as we're talking, I'm actually researching, because you know me, if, if something doesn't make sense and I need to find the answer, like right now, <laughs> <laughs> that's an issue that I have at work, it's the same thing. So I did just find out the biomechanical warriors were all played by female stunts. There you go. Your wife, wife was right. She could tell. Oh, she was right. Fire him. 
she she showed me off. <laughs> so, um, Captain Chaos, would you like to eat one of those pigs? Or would you like to put them on the grill? What? The pigs. It, you can make these really big sandwiches with them really easy. Cause I will release them back into uh, what you might call Minecraft. Those poor animals, they, they, you know they can't be released to the wild. I mean, how they can they walk? Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking maybe they came from Minecraft. That was exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> hey, you know. Um... They look like Minecraft thing, bro. <laughs> Literally. Minecraft oh. didn't exist about that. Oh, wow. Of the game. It's a com <laughs> completely cubed uh, pig. Cute? Cute. Oh, cube. Ah, okay. It's scary for a second there. How do you put it on a pike on a on a barbecue? <laughs> uh, it's a, it's gonna feel like you're rolling marshmallows. <laughs> what do you think they make it? Oh wow. So you know, you know the pig might be cubed, but the meat wouldn't be because there'd be like internal spaces for intestines and stuff in the middle. So yeah, yeah. Um, they did say that it was uh, um, genetically engineered, um, it, it, which is kind of funny. I mean, if we knew, if we look at today, for example, um, what they do to chickens to make them bigger for more meat, because you know, the more meat, the more money. Um, it, you you are not, you would not be surprised um, if they end up with something like this just to get more meat. So um, the chicken cross the road, go to the gym to get thick. <laughs> <laughs> Which I, I I don't know. I mean, I don't know what what Ray might say about this one, but I think that is the issue uh, in today's uh, food consumption because all those hormones uh, they end up in our bodies. And yeah, it's um, bad news, man. I think that's why we have such a difference uh, in the generation gap. Um, like uh, you, the way that kids um, have developed today are completely yeah. different than the way they were developed by the time that I was a kid or I was a, yeah. a teenager. And I think it's because um, back on those, you know, when I was a teenager, um, we didn't have, I mean, we, we, we had McDonald's, so maybe we had the beginning of this, um, but it's not as bad as it is today. I mean, you can go to a supermarket and get a hormone chicken. Um, I mean, if you've ever gone to Disney, have you ever got one of those turkey legs? Oh, God. They're as big as your head. Yeah, they're ridiculous. So, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I When I saw that, I wasn't surprised. I was like, you know, I can see how this could be our future. You know, the yep. generically altered, because uh, it's happening today. Uh, what do you think about Ray? I mean, I, I kind of trust your opinion when it comes to something like that. I'm yes. going to tell you what do I think about Ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to hear you. I'll take my headphones off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Well, um, the, the issue here is not making food better. It's making food more convenient to raise. Exactly. And the whole point of the square pig joke and I call it a joke because <laughs> yes, you know, it, was, it was pretty funny um, in a way. It's not funny in the implications, but it's funny in the way it was presented. But the whole thought of squaring off an animal so that they stack better, so that you can highly yeah. intensely raise them, um, is abhorrent for a whole bunch of reasons. But if you're just looking at it in a completely unemotional way, um, you know, like space on a spaceship is paramount. Like you, you want to fill up every little corner with something because you only have a very limited amount of area that you can use. So having, if you're going to transport animals through space, having them square so that they stack properly would be of a great advantage in in the whole issue of space versus um materials that you can stack and therefore being able to genetically modify 
an animal so that it was square so it would stack better makes a whole lot of sense on an unemotional um purely utilitarian ideal but it's not something that anybody with any sort of common sense would consider so that's why it was funny it was sort of saying well if you take this to the nth degree um this is the sort of stupid crap that somebody would come up with and try and make it happen <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, it's completely in, in unethical so i mean yeah yeah you've got to look at it from that perspective as well uh, I'm I'm kind of curious to hear your thought on something that I heard online on this movie being described to be. And I'm going to go ahead and say it, and you guys let me know what your thoughts are. So this movie has been described in the past as Star Wars The New Hope meets Predator meets Hook. Hook. That, that wasn't what I was expecting. <laughs> um, I, I, I kind of felt like it was, it was sort of a combination of Star Wars, um, uh, uh, is it National Treasure? Um, <laughs> the the one with um, with um. Oh, what's his name? Um, um, Nick Cage. Yeah. Nick Cage. Nick yeah, Cage. Remember that? Remember that movie? Yeah, National Nick. Treasure. I so Star him. Star Wars National Treasure and Smokey and the Bandit rides again. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, that's that's the sort of combination that I sort of saw it as. Smokey and the Bandit, bro, definitely. <laughs> now I am curious. Why are you laughing, Gio? I'm, I want to know. <laughs> because yes, yeah, like. I re catch a lot of vibes that I catch from the show. They're like smoking the bandit, bro. Like when they were driving, I was just smoking the bandit. Like not even the cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. It, it just you know, going back to that 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 comment that we have when he's like running away from the cops and he turns around uh in a truck. I was, I don't know if you guys agree, but I was thinking if this was actually done in real life, that could be, Elimination. that could be bad. Elimination. I see this thing flipping around without control all throughout space <laughs> and just going around and around Breaking in circles. Satellites. Yeah. I, I mean, what, what do you guys thought? I mean, I was looking at this and I was like, oh, you know, that, that I'm glad this is a movie and this is how it turned out. But in real life, yeah. uh... bro, that that the hey heat could even end up on Earth killing people. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, because that's on the orbit. <laughs> yeah. Know? But but I mean, it gave me a lot of vibes too of like cowboy people. Oh, you yeah. Know, the, you know, the oh, weird, of course. The yes. house, they're feeling to it. Oh yeah, but like, do you remember that episode that was all truckers, race truckers? The episode, uh, the heavy metal queen. It was a blonde lady that had a cat, and she was a space trucker. Why the one? I don't remember. What what show is this? How are you? Both? Oh yes, yes, yes. Yeah, the trucks are just like that. Well, they don't look like the trucks. They look more square vehicles. Mm -hmm. But it's the same system of containers and everything. It, it's not, it looked to me a bit childish. And I show truck, truck, hooked up on truck. It's like, uh, come on, bro. <laughs> I, I want to I ask this question, and I'm kind of curious to hear your thoughts. Um, this movie, right? Would you like to see a remake? Um, where, where you know they just remake the movie, or they they just the characters. Go. No, no, I, I know, I know. 
what would you, you know, or not? I mean, having known, I mean, it's kind of easy for us to answer that question because me and Gio have not seen this movie until last week. No, so we're directors, so we know our movies are amazing. We can. We we know <laughs> we we know that there is a cult following on this movie, um, and and I like to think that Ray is part of that because he's seen it when it actually came out, <laughs> or at least I like to think that he is. Um, having that in mind, would you like to see this remake? Um, I'm curious. I, I would like to Honestly, see. A, I would like I to see a remake it. only because I'm curious. Yes. Um, with it, there's always I'll a fear. <laughs> there's always there's always a fear, and this is why I'm I'm kind of curious to hear Geo's opinions. I like to guess that with today's technology, they can make it to where Geo would actually like this movie. However, there has been many occasions when they are actually destroying an IP. Because they don't get this, the, the idea that the movie is trying to make. Um, also, there's a thing where you can continue this, continue the story, uh, which is also part of this question. If you'd like to see a remake or a continuation, um, I'm curious to see. And 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 the reason why I say this is like, okay, I know some of the people that are actually listening to this they are a fan of this movie. They're they're you know they're cult followers of this movie would call this, you know, oh, this is an abomination. Don't touch, don't touch what has <laughs> has been already been made. Would you admit that the following for this movie is a niche? Well, it is it's definitely a niche. And I think every following, every cult following, uh, it's, it's actually a niche. No, I mean, we are a guy's a sleeper. He has a cult following. It's well, an iconic movie. It, yeah, it's an iconic movie. Now, uh, the reason why I'm saying this is because the way that I look at it, okay, say, for example, they actually remake this movie. And let's say, for yeah. example, a bomb. Let's say that they did a horrible thing. It looks like crap. It's a horrible movie. Well, that never happens. Well, it, it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to continue, my, my, my comment is I always have the original. And this is something I never, I never understand. Um, it, well, I kind of understand. But... If they do that, I always have the original to fall back in. Having said all this, I guess we should start with Gio because I'm really curious because Gio, out of all of us, Gio is the one that would not really rewatch, although he did admit that it was a fun movie. Uh, what do you think? What is your thought on that, Gio, about remake or continuation? Um, having said all that that I just said. Again, love the movie. It's fun. Um I think that it is like it's worth running that risk. There's no loss. There's a risk of it being a flop, and you always have the original one that is never gonna change. So you have a good product, anyway. You know, but with CGI and a couple of improvements on like the character building qualities, they're up for a, even a TV, a TV show. Okay. Right. You know, you know, I I didn't mention this before because you know I ha hadn't thought about it in a sci-fi perspective. But if I just stuck to sci-fi movies to compare the vibe of this show to another one that's worth mentioning is Firefly. Oh yes, yes, yes. Oh yeah. So so like Cowboy Bebop, Firefly, Star Wars kind of vibes, and I yeah. think that. If if you spent the money and did good special effects, thought a little bit harder and made it a bit more expansive in its slavish maintenance of science fact, as far as we understand it, for being out in space, you could you could make this almost as good as Expanse in a, in a series. Now, saying that, Ray, I I, I, I am forced I I'm I'm forced to ask this question. Um, making it more like, let's say, for example, making it more like The Expanse, right? Because mm -hmm. that's that's the only thing that I can think of at this point uh, as being the most realistic when it comes to space travel and, you know, space theme IP. Yeah. 
Um, would that take away from this movie? Because having this, this movie is meant to be a comedy. Would that take away from the comedic aspect of this movie? Or do you think that would probably add based on the writing on that remake? It's really, really hard to say, mainly because the the expanse is meant to be quite serious. Exactly. And yeah. there is no comedic yeah. elements yeah. to that show. Where whereas you look at something like Firefly, there are definite comedic elements to that show, but it is also quite serious. Yeah. Um, so it's more of a the Firefly sort of in between this and and um the expanse. Um I mean, it all comes down to what you're trying to achieve in tone and setting mm -hmm. and and how good the writers are. I mean, it looked like quite an interesting universe. There was enough detail there that, you know, you've got, you've got the big companies versus the independent truckers. You've got the police whose job's almost impossible because, you know, people can escape in any direction. Um, <laughs> yeah. You've got... You've got um, Companies doing wow. top secret oh. bullshit oh, wow. out on the out of moons. Uh, you've got um, a, a government failing on a, a, a crumbling planet Earth, um, and it's getting privatized. Um, there's there's a whole bunch of stuff to explore. You could make a really really interesting series out of this. I think you probably wouldn't want to go uh, full twenty five episodes per season kind of show, but you know eight. The, the sort of short eight season shows that they do on Disney Plus, like Mandalorian, something of that ilk, I reckon there'd be plenty of material to make our Space Truckers the series show and come up with enough interesting stuff that it would hang together. And there can be, rather than just, oh, this shit happened while I was transporting square pigs to Venus or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I mean, you look at you look at shows like um, uh, now what's Would it called? You feel like it's more in the realm of like uh, freaking Grey's Anatomy, Channel TV, BBC TV. Hmm. I'm thinking Big Trouble in Little China with the Pork Chop Express. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, you you could you could pitch it in that sort of direction but in space um you could even bring supernatural elements into it i mean you could do all sorts of fun things with this um uh you could bring in like triads and yakuza and all sorts of stuff and put them in space you could do all sorts of fun stuff um you could you could go down the whole um you know, the trucker owes a huge amount of money because he dumped the load because he was getting boarded by the by the um, authorities, sort of Han Solo line of, of problems to be overcome. There's all sorts of stuff you could do here um, that would be fun and interesting and still keep the comedic element. You mightn't go as heavy on it as they did in the movie, but you could still have a – you could still sort of run that sort of firefly level of serious and, and comedy – and um, and still come up with an interesting show. I mean, this 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 could be a way to get the Firefly we series going on that we never had uh, because it was completely screwed by uh, Fox um, C, uh, CEOs and uh, upper echelons. But uh, I mean, it's interesting. I mean, the the movie mightn't be such a classic that it's worth watching every six months, like some of the other movies that you happen yeah. to like, Robert. But mm -hmm. certainly. It's an interesting one watch, and it might be interesting to like if it's on when you come home after being out one Saturday, and it's on late Saturday night. You might sit down and watch watch it because it's because it's there. Um, it's got enough interest That's to do fair. something like that, um, and you know it, it it's got snappy dialogue. Um, we <laughs> we spent ten minutes trying to choose which of the six quotes that we had that we were going to use, and we ended up going with the dick quote because Robert. But um, <laughs> we're, we're, the, the, there's I mean, enough in this I mean, movie to make it interesting. For one, we talk about a dick joke, and then you get a dick of the show. Yo, yeah. <laughs> there's nothing, nothing like um, a dick joke to start off an episode of Suffering, apparently. Yeah, because why not? You know, it's invigorating. 
<laughs> oh, so but yeah, I I think they could make a series out of this, like a short series, uh, so we, you know we wouldn't get too bored with it. But I think it could do quite well. You you have a really good point uh, when you mention Firefly. Um, I, I can see this being a it's like which. By the way, I have to say I'm I'm actually a little scared because I keep on hearing that Disney is um, e either in talks or 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 getting ready to uh, do a, a Firefly. Um, Screw it up with John Carter. <sighs> well, you know, John Carter. And, and, and again, you guys, if you want to go down to our season one and download that your Carter episode, you probably get all the the, the full. Um, our full opinions, but I I feel that where they screwed up was actually marketing. Um, yeah. the, the movie was amazing, although no, I have to agree, you know that they, they mixed that the part. first three books, um, you know, and, and they just did their own thing. But even at that, it was a good movie. Yeah. So, um, but going back to this, what do you think about that, Gio? I mean, I, I was. The Firefly thing, this being some some Firefly esque uh, TV show. Um, if they are not able to reproduce the same formula for the cast, uh, it might not be a success. Really, you, you're a lot more familiar with Cowboy Bebop. Would you see this more of a like a style, a Cowboy Bebop styled? TV show. It could happen. It could happen very much. Like it was not bad, but they screw up completely the, the timeline and story. I'm probably over too. You know. Now, question for all of us here. Well, actually, for Gio and and Ray, only because we love anime. Would you would would you would you love to see this as an anime? I reckon that this could yeah. this could work as an anime. I do. Yeah. Definitely. I, okay. I think that I think that they could really ham up some of the the places where they were hamming up, and it would work as an anime. And and the reason why I'm saying this is because I can see how the medium that it it's it's delivered in could actually yeah. work in the benefit of this of, of the actual story. I think this would work a lot better as an anime because of how the medium is right now. And how it's like how far fetched it is. Yeah, and like there's a lot of more crowd for niche on anime. Even yeah. for sports, specific sports. And, and, and if you is, okay. Yeah. And, and if you love this movie, you know, and, and you're a cult follower of this movie, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I know we're bla we're we're talking blasphemy here, and I understand. I, I believe me, I do. There's, you know, uh, talk about, we just talked about Firefly, for example, and how I feel that uh, it scares me, the remake. And and if you talk to Captain Chaos here, uh, it, you, you'll, you'll know very well that he agrees that I actually love the, the, the movie uh, Dragon Ball and, and, and the movie right. called um, The Last Airbender. Ah, he means he means Pandora, the world avatar. <laughs> so yeah, believe me, we know, we really know, and you know, Geo can tell you, Captain Chaos well, can tell you. <laughs> well, I can give you a perfect example of that um, fear of of remake business, and that was when I heard that they were redoing Battlestar Galactic because that was a real sort of golden memory you know through the rose tinted glasses of a of a an eight or nine year old uh, back in the day and i was really worried that they were going to screw it up and i went into watching the new series thinking this is going to be crap they're going to ruin my childhood memories and the first couple of episodes i just wasn't into it what the hell starbucks a girl how can that possibly be it was a cigar smoking sm smarmy mouth guy this doesn't work rah 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 so forth and so on and then it started to work for me. I started, I started to think, okay, this is different, but it's along the same lines, but it is different, but it is good different. And I eventually really got into the show. And 
now I appreciate both of them. They're, they're not the same. They're different takes on the same rough storyline. And they're both good in their own ways. Like, obviously, I don't think Geo's going to like the original Battlestar Galactica because it is quite campy. Um, so I think that there's an issue with that there. But, I mean, the new Battlestar Galactica is probably going to love because uh, it's not campy at all. Uh, what do you want to call it, Robert, the show of Galactica? Caprica. 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 Have you watched Caprica? Oh, yeah. Ray? Oh, yeah, I loved Caprica. I well, really wish they'd gone through that with that. Galactica that I was, like, in love with the show. Mm. I was crazy about it. Well, well the, tell you the, the, story, the actual sure. three-season show of Battlestar Galactica, the, the early noughties version, is very much in the same vein as Caprica. So it's got the same sort of intense vibe, mm -hmm. the sort of survivalist shit, everybody's yeah. against us kind of feeling and who can you trust and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Very much the same vibe. So I think you should watch the 2002, is it, Galactica? Yeah. Well, Check that uh, out. I was going to say a story about that one because I, I I think I'm with you, Ray. When I when that movie was announced, um, I was very, very afraid. And and everybody that knows me knows that I don't like dark stories. So Battlestar Galactica no. is dark, mm -hmm. right? There, You can't take that away from that. It is just, it is dark, right? So I started watching this, and I'm like, oh, my God, they just destroyed my favorite show. They, they, they destroyed it. You know, the, the, it, this is a dark show, and I'm not, I'm, I'm not liking this. And I was surprised that I want to say by the end of the first episode, I was hooked. And, and, and it just like you said, it's, it's just... It's a different take on the story, but they did it really good. And right now, I actually finished the entire thing back when it was in, on air. And um, I would have to say that I actually love both versions of Galactica now. But I do remember, in retrospect, going back when it first started, how I was not having it. It was just like, I, I wonder why I, I continued... Maybe my curiosity um, continued to watch that first episode all the way to the end, but I was not happy. So I definitely understand you. Um, and I think I'm, we're not alone. I mean, there's a lot of people that I've talked to um, online that actually are, and I mean, don't get me wrong, there's people out there there's, that they still don't like the, the uh, reimagined Battlestar Galactica. I mean, there's people out there, obviously. Um, but most of the people that I've talked to, uh, they have very found memories of both of these, like, uh, of this retellings. Uh, you know, that I mean, the original and the retelling of the story of Battlestar Galactica. So, uh, going back, um, going back to this movie, um, do you think that? It's campiness, or maybe um, not, I don't want. I, I mean, should it's I a say? Combination. Should I say it's camp? Well, let me say. Let me say it this way: It's campiness might be um, the reason why this movie it is the way it is right now, as far as its comedic factor. Or do you think that was? Um, I mean, obviously, it was unintentionally. He's the trucker, right? I'm sorry? Our main character, our protagonist, is the trucker. Yeah. Uh, right? Yeah. He, he doesn't show confidence. Like, he doesn't have his own thing going. Like, he's chasing after this lady. Like, a la mala, brother. <laughs> like, like, I'll take you to Earth or marry me. <laughs> like, come on. And then, like, he's being too much underdog. And being laughed at, like, like this kid just like, like swagging on his face, like. <laughs> and I, he took his shipment too. <laughs> you know, I was. It's a it's, it's an interesting thing you mentioned that. I was really wondering. Uh, I mean, what is the age difference between that this, you know, um, this this girl in the diner, is is your typical you know. 
um, waitress on a diner and and this and this uh, trucker, right? Um, so that's the first thing that I that I actually notice, and then, um, you know, the, the Cindy, right, the the the, the waitress. So. It, I kind of feel bad for the situation. And, and and let me know if you guys agree with this. He 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 obviously is in love with Cindy. So he figured out, okay, you know, if you want to go to Earth, I'll figure out a way to get you to Earth so you can marry me. That it's kind of like a bad situation, right? And and not only that. But he he's you know once in one way he's he's in a way forcing himself into her, uh, in another way she's just looking for a way to get home to his mother. Uh, but if you look at that from the perspective, um, when you analyze the entire movie, obviously uh, you kind of feel bad for him too because it's obvious that she's not into him, right? My camera is not showing. No. Nope. What do you mean? Okay. Now it is. Now it is. Okay. So. So how old do you reckon she's the character is in the movie? Uh, well, the reason why I'm saying all this, uh, just to, to finish up my, my, my thought process here, is it, it, it kind of, it, I kind of feel better towards the end. Because it is very obvious that when he met Cindy's mom, that his mom was really into him and not like Cindy. Mm. And and you could see how this was this could end up being um, double couple, where double date. Well, you know, it's a it's a double couple. So, but you feel better because there is two, a two way street. Between Cindy's mom and, and and him, right? So, I guess Ray, you started you started you commenting on it. So I guess we could start with you. What is yeah. your thought of that? I mean, I'm I'm, I'm curious. Well, she there, there did seem to be a fairly significant age difference. He looked pretty well um, pretty well cooked, where she was she was looking pretty fresh. Um, but I was just going to ask you, Robert, um, uh, how old do you reckon the character of of Cindy was in in the movie. I don't even remember she mentioned it, but I uh, can I say twenty nine? Sure. Wow. You can say whatever you want. What? What? I thought, I thought we got twenty five. You you go with so 25? so the the actress Debbie Mazar. Um, how old do you reckon she was when she made this movie? Mm, that's one thing I have not looked at. No, don't look it up. I want to get your opinion. 22, 23. Uh, so Gia reckons she's 23. I'm, I'm, I'm going to throw a number there. I want to say 20, 25. When she made this movie, she was 38. Oh, wow. Yeah, she's born in 1964. She's older than us, dude. Wow. Yeah. Ooh. Right. She uh well preserved. Yeah, she doesn't <laughs> no. In this movie she doesn't look that age. No. I mean the, not that, that age should look any She's overly sexualized. Dude. I'm sorry? She's overly sexualized and sanctified uh, but... as a sexual object throughout the movie. <laughs> That's oh. the thing about the camp is if they catch it in the movie, he does not discriminate. He goes straight up. <laughs> Uh, but you know, <laughs> now that you mentioned that, it's it, you have a point in the fact that it it's it, she's sexualized without sexualizing her character. Does that make yeah. sense? Oh, the stupid innocence, right? Oh, he's not. Let's take her the clothes off. Yeah, but I mean, look at her. Even <laughs> even with her clothes off, it wasn't far fetched. I mean, imagine a movie t in today's day. Where they, they say the the same scenario happened. It's okay. Let's take our clothes off. Um, you'll have probably a thong and like a really skimpy 
Um, so it's like overly sexualized. Well, you'll be overheating so much that trust me, getting aroused is the last thing you gotta be thinking of. But but you see what I'm, you see where I'm getting. Yeah. You do you understand where I'm getting at? Is yeah. the fact that it it, it wasn't overly sexualized. It, although there was a lot of topics about sex and about stuff like that, um, it wasn't she like... Was she was distressed. She was a girl between the rock and a hard place. And her bra was pushed up nice all the time. <laughs> yeah, I don't think... I mean, Ray, do you see I what mean, I'm just... The, yeah. the lady reserved panties where... Shit. I mean... <laughs> Uh, I don't know if really the, understand where I'm coming the, from. The, uh, vaguely, but I was just to say the interesting thing is Stephen Dorff, who played Mike, is nine years younger than um, Debbie Mazer. Wow. They did not look like they had nine years between them in that movie. Nope. Nope. Not at all. So there you go. The magic of movies. So... Well, going back to what I was saying, Ray, um, what I'm saying is, and let me see if I can post it in this manner. Take that scene where they, they took the clothes off on the cabin. Yeah. Bring it to today's, let's say, for example, they, they, they re redid this scene today with new actors. Yeah. How would you reckon that scene will differ? And I mean, this is a movie. Are you are you even allowed to have like love scenes, sex scenes in movies these days? I don't even know if they do. <laughs> well, even even if you don't, let, let's let's take let's make it simple. Let's make a, you know, it's just a kissing scene, Bro, just like in the movie. You literally can do in zero gravity the helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> but you, you see where I'm going. Let's let's take away the sex scenes completely. Let's just leave mm -hmm. the the kissing on it. How would it differ on today's, you know, uh, if it was made today? I couldn't tell you. I just, <laughs> I, I don't have that aesthetic, so I, I couldn't tell you what they'd do. Well, the, the way that I'm looking at. And, and maybe this will help you visualize what I'm, where I'm coming from when I'm making this comment. If you look at scenes similar to this in today's world, um, you would see a very sexualized scene and extremely over-sexualized, even if you do not have a sex scene. Because I've seen it in many movies today. I mean, come on, bro. The chick is chained Hands up. No, but I wasn't with talking... A, with, a, with a room full of pirates. I wasn't talking about that scene. But even that scene, even that scene wasn't as sexualized in this movie as it could have been if it's made today. Fresh bitch. Oh, am I wrong in saying that statement? No. I don't know. You're not wrong. I mean, I, it depends on the director. It depends on the production company. It depends on the pressure from the execs. Um, the the, big, big you, you, could, you could film the raunchiest, oh, get right. stripping down and having a kiss scene, and then they say, pair it back, make it less raunchy. Um, and it ends up on the cutting room floor. So I mean, Don't get me wrong. We had Barbarella, which is older, right? Mm. Oh, yeah. So don't get me wrong. I know <laughs> that the movies could have been made like that back then. But I, I, I don't know. For some reason, I do appreciate that because it concentrates on the story. And, and I don't know if I'm making sense in that. But, but we do I agree that if you make a couple of twitches here and there and cards are flaws, like to me, I feel like our main character, my protagonist, was not a confident character. Hmm. But he was a knowledgeable character. Okay. Like he knew his way around everything. He knew the people and the places. You know. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have to agree with that. Um, I don't know. It was just you know me. I'm I'm 
as I watch this movie, I'm, I'm thinking about different things and making Mr. Overthink. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think that the Earth, this future was ruled by the UN already? I was ruled by Mr. Sachs. <laughs> wow, well, the the government was privatized. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, it's it's what it's being feared in many sci-fi, specifically in cyberpunk sci-fi, where the most. where where a corporation <laughs> is actually ruling, uh, is a ruling body. So, yeah, and you get more square pigs that way. Yeah. <laughs> I, I I wanted to see the square cows, but you know, that's just me. Well, when when you milk them, it just comes out in cartons. You don't, it's all square. <laughs> oh my god, that visualization is crazy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh wow. So, oh. I, I, I think. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we have got. You're stuttering. We we <laughs> that, that, that. Uh, we have come to the point uh, to the part of the podcast where we have to ask Gio's favorite question. First, middle, and final thoughts. Final After thoughts. Party. Final thoughts. Final thoughts. Um, I think I'm gonna. <laughs> oh man! If you're not if you're not watching our YouTube channel, you should. Um, <laughs> We, we we do so we, uh, exactly. We 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 display some things and we don't tell you about it. And then you just if you're listening to us right now and you're wondering why we get distracted, what we're laughing, um, <laughs> that is a, that is your cue to actually subscribe to our YouTube channel and um, and just stay tuned for this episode to release. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Uh, I think I I think I want to start with Gio, only because between me and him, which are the newbies to this movie, um, he is the one that. Well, let's put it this way: uh, he has a complete different opinion than I do about this movie. So, Gio, what is your final thought on this movie? If you haven't watched this movie, watch it. It's fun. Uh. I mean, most people have a good taste for campiness, you know? It, it, it's not it's not something that you would regret watching. You know, it's fun, it's fun to watch. It, I think it's attached to the time that it was made to. What do you think, guys? Yeah, it is a product of its time. So. Definitely. Like, if they would have made that movie nowadays, it would look more like our Or if they want to make it more like closer to our actuality, to what we out there, it would look very like SpaceX kind of space, you know, yeah. and it wouldn't look that like how would come with you probably. Yeah, I think that you know, with me guys, it will look more like a formal initial dress uh, communities, you know, it. yeah, like space suits, like that, not like clothing. Um, I guess since I am the other newbie in this movie, I would go next. I, I, I honestly want to hear Ray's thoughts last because he's, you know, he's seen it so so long ago. Um, tell the science, and I'm kind of that, well, I, I'm uh, kind, I'm kind of curious. Yeah, I'm kind of curious to hear, you know, um, from his rewatch perspective. Um, because I, I, you know, that's one of the things that I'm going to miss out on the rewatch perspective. Maybe if we redo this on like season five or science fiction, right? And then I can, you know, we can, I can give you the <laughs> perspective of rewatch, but I don't have that rewatch perspective. Um, uh, if, if you are like me, if you are like me and Ray, right? If you are from that generation um, and if you haven't seen this movie, um, I, I think um, it, it deserves a, a watch. Um, uh, if, if you like that campiness, obviously this is a must. Um, but at the very least, you should watch it at least once. Um, and, and I, I venture to say that if you are from, from my generation, for example, 
Um, this is something that you're going to appreciate. Uh, and it's going to be one of those comfort oh, yeah. movies where, you, you know, if you want to come, you know, you put a comfort movie on and just, you know, when you want to feel better, this is a, this is obviously a comedy, uh, although it is, it has dark, uh, dark topics, which I don't like. It is not the dark movie. Um, no, it's, not. It, it's just very funny, very fun uh, to watch. Um, the, um, they made attempts to make it realistically um, when it comes to uh, the science in it, on yeah. most parts. And uh, you it's already heard. Huh? <laughs> it's better than a Smeagol. Than... <laughs> <laughs> and, and obviously, there's parts that, that, that are not, uh, which I think is it, it brings the charm uh, to, to, to the way this movie is. Um, if you are from, for example, from uh, Geo's generation, the roller um, coaster truck. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was kind of funny. The the, the way yeah. that they have those. Uh, if you ever been in a roller coaster, um, uh, you can relate and how they bring that metal down whenever they they have to Bro, uh, go ahead. You know, I saw there's a guy that makes prank, mm. makes that a big bolt goes off. So he gets a bolt on the thing on the right. It shows it to the president, right? But they take off. It was like, see that the wall there. And the guy's like, what? Yeah. You did like the dress, you're like, I'm going to show you a bull. I mean, that of it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, but going back to, to, to what I was saying is if, um, if you are from Geo's generation, um, you have to watch it at least once. Um, yeah. This is this is a fun movie. I, I'm I'm sure that um, if you have to watch it once and never watch it again, um, it's going to have a fun memory. Um, I I find it very hard to believe that you're not going to enjoy this movie um, to the point that you might want to have a rewatch on this maybe every no, six months um, or maybe every year. Uh, whatever, uh, but it is it is a it is a fun watch, and I am very very curious uh, to hear from you guys if you are from that you know from any perspective, um, if you have never seen this uh, movie before and you decided to watch it because of you heard it on this show, um, go ahead and hit us out on Discord. Um, I, I'm we all of us are very very curious to hear your thoughts um, on this movie. If it's something that, you know, oh, you enjoyed it, uh, oh, but that's enough for me, or you enjoyed it, and it's like, I have to watch it every time. Or is Ew. or if it's one of those... I enjoy it, it's enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> or, or if you, you know, say, oh, this is this is a crappy movie, and um, uh, it doesn't matter. Um, you reach out. If you are actually uh, listening to our um, uh, watching our show on YouTube, uh, you can go ahead and scan, uh, scan that QR code. Uh, it's going to take us to our um, Discord, and that's an invite that I have there. If you are listening to this on the pod, uh, there's going to be an invite link on the description of the show. Um, so please join and, and, and let us know. We're really curious to see what your thoughts uh, on this movie is. Um, I guess this is uh, Ray Stern. I'm very, very Hi. curious to hear his thoughts after a rewatch on this movie. Because you know, when you watch this a long time ago, the, the, I'm I'm sure there's, unless you you rewatch this frequently, there's going to be things that you you forget. And and this oh, is sure. something that I do not have about this movie because you rewatch this and then you're like, oh my god, I I completely forgot about this, or you know. So take it away, Ray. Well, I mean when this movie came out and when it was, you know, fresh to um, home release was late nineties. So that was um, 26, 27 years ago. So that, that, that was a, 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 a hot minute. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> you know, I was a different person back then because I was a lot younger, less experienced, um, watched sci-fi probably for completely different reasons. Um, I do remember when I was a lot younger, I was big into the spaceship designs and the funky technology, and that was pretty much it. I, I wasn't 
I wasn't a, a, a huge fan of um, the dialogue and the pacing and and the overall story and whether it was plot holes and all that other sort of story analysis stuff that I'm into now because I've become a writer. But um, the main things that I remembered from this movie was the trucks and the pull star penis, which is something that stays with you. <laughs> you will never forget that. <laughs> Yeah, they need to get that. <laughs> that 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 particular scene will stay with you, uh, but um, it was done in a classy way. I mean, you didn't you didn't actually get to see it, but you got to hear it. Um, and that and that whole you know hint at but don't directly show is very Hitchcockian in the way that you know you let the person's imagination um, uh, you know fill in the fill in the gaps and. Um, often be more interesting than what you could possibly show for the special effects budget that you had, which wasn't huge because this movie was 25 million all up, uh, which was obviously more in 19, the mid 1990s, but um, still not a lot of money for a movie when you look at the budgets of, you know, 250, 300 million that they have these days. So um, is it a good movie? In some ways, yes. In some ways, no. Um, it is a product of its time, so there's some over sexualization. It's not PC, so if you're particularly sensitive in that area, it may not be for you. Um, if you like smart ass humor, uh, if you like a bit of campiness, it's that's there in spades. You can really in, lean into that and enjoy it. Um, every second scene has good, sort of sci fi chops in that you know they're, they're thinking about what it's like to be in space and the limitations of that and then every uh first scene um they uh just ignore it completely for fun stuff like space trucks that can turn on a dime and stuff like this <laughs> so um yeah i mean all in all the sci-fi is there parts of it are really well thought out and other parts are just the way it is for the humor or to suit the story they just didn't bother bother with it in every it. single instance but they showed enough of it to show that they had some respect for the science uh and and had thought about it a bit and didn't labor the point they they just it was there and um, it was part of the story. It wasn't sort of like, hey, look at this, we're doing the science and, and it's accurate or vaguely accurate and rah, rah, rah. No, it was it was just part of the story. And you you as a watcher had to spot it. And that's what I like. I like when it when the science is in the background, they're not waving it in your face. Um, like they don't like go, okay, here's a weapon and it works like this. And this is the theoretical science behind it, which has now become a reality because we're in the future, true, 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 true. <laughs> you know, so they 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 didn't well, push any of that, which which I preferred, yeah, except for the except for the pull star things. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah, um, this 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 movie is kind of like Two Face from Batman. Um, one side is the sensible science fiction story of the future, and the other side is the campy guy rebuilt half of his body, including half of his brain. Yeah, right. Like you'd be able to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but um, you, you know, and and they they camped it up. So, I mean, it's it, it's it's a bit of a psycho movie in that it, it doesn't quite know what it is, but. For some somehow it works, and I think that the acting was was quite reasonable. Um, I think that Dennis Hopper did a pretty good job as the as the lead character. Yeah, um, I agree. And, and I actually think that as as his foil, Charles Dance, um, who played Doctor Nabel and Captain Macanudo, um, he he was quite a good bad guy in that sort of sort of tough british um a complete asshole but actually being quite chivalrous about being an asshole if you understand what i mean by that and i mean we we actually had it in the quote there uh, which kind of describes dr nabel the 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 bad guy it goes um um you know for a son of a bitch gimp rapist murderer he died okay <laughs> and that encapsulates the guy's character. 
They don't make bad guys when they, you know, like they used to. No, they really. I wanted to ask Ray, science question. Yeah. Do you think that the guy that went through the hole through his asshole on the window when they they compress it? Yeah. Was realistic. It's it's hard to say if the decompression would have been strong enough to pull him through that little window. Um, it reminds me of a slightly a slightly less violent version of the alien creature in Alien 4, Alien Resurrection, being pulled through that small hole in the side of the spacecraft yeah. as they're re-entering the atmosphere. And really, I think it's probably more believable than the Alien movie in, in that regard. That, you know, it was... The Alien movie... That alien per se was recently born, so it was tough still. Maybe, yeah, maybe, big maybe. <laughs> <laughs> big That's maybe. the thing with sci-fi. There's a but lot of big die away anyway. Mm. Okay. You, there's, there's, you, you're quite correct, Robert. That's probably the best way to encapsulate the whole thing. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, decompression. I don't know what the physical forces are that are, are like obviously the oxygen is rushing out because there's a space which has no molecules in it and you've got a space that has lots and the simple pressure of the inside of the ship is pushing its way out. Now, I don't know if there'd be enough pressure in the ship to push somebody through a window that small. Um, probably not, I would think. Yeah. I but, but, you know, it's hard to say. There may be some physical forces that I'm unaware of that would cause it to be of a higher pressure than I would think it would be. It's something that I'd like to research, actually. But I don't know if anybody's really been sucked out of window into space before. So, <laughs> I mean, it might depend on how big the station is. Like, if the if it's a little small sort of pod, there's not a lot of gas in this. There's not a lot of pressure. But an entire space station full of atmosphere pushing on somebody might push them out a window like that quite easily. Who knows? And they, then you, they, have to, you have to have in mind, if are all the doors open... Because if there's bulkheads and you, you have a very small section where this air is rushing out, then even if you have an entire space station, it wouldn't have enough pressure. Exactly. So it might depend on how big the area that's being evacuated is as to how much pressure there is. But I would think there's only be one atmosphere of pressure, no matter what, because that's what we live in. So although the air, when it's un inhibited would be rushing out quite quickly and it would take small things with it. I don't know that it could push a person out a small window like that. No, but I then mean, that takes that takes away from the humor, doesn't it? If he, yeah, if he just goes boom, boom, boom and fills it, up the hole. It could go with it. Freezing ass outside. It would, yes. I, I you know, I uh, I had to say this because it came to my mind when I was watching this scene. Uh, I, I do have to agree with you. I don't think that the you know, I'll have to research. Maybe the math would be uh, the, the the only venue that we have to actually predict if this is a reality or not. But, and that's why we need to invite Kyle Hill. So Kyle Hill, if you're listening, you know, we'd like to have you on the show. But um, the, the, when I was watching that, I was thinking, depending on how he's stuck on the window, right? Um. It could be bad for his intestines. Do you agree? Oh, I'm I'm sure that the ba his back end wouldn't be doing very well at all because he'd be exposed to cosmic radiation and vacuum and low temperature. Well, Unless, of course, it's the sunny side, and which of course it would be yes getting cooked. <laughs> yeah, so cooking, cooking. I was just talking about you know without mentioning you know the obvious. His butt, uh, if he has it positioned just right, uh, adding the vacuum, uh, I don't know. I, I was worst hemorrhoid, yeah, that's where I was going with this. I, hemorrhoid. Would it be possible though? Because the pressure is in the outside, but I, I don't know. I mean, it's hard to say. His anus is outside. <laughs> That's what I envisioned it would be. <laughs> but do, do you guys agree? Would it be would it be like I envisioned? I mean, I can't really tell. Uh, my mind goes there, but 
Mm. I think that it will sell him off from the side, kill him. But it will make a night court with him. In there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, what, what, what do you think, Ray? Do you think I'm stretching? No point in telling the truth, or I, 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 I do not have a strong feeling either way. It, yeah, it, it, it's, it's something that would have to be researched. I mean, we talked about this during the um, during the uh, pod that we did on Event Horizon, where the guy mm -hmm. went out in without a spacesuit. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and a consensus was he could survive for thirty seconds, but it wouldn't make him bleed like it did. Yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. um, so, I mean, I, I just don't know. I mean, depending on how long his ass was stuck in that window, it could do horrible things to him. But I, think I the don't sun know that it would suck him out. Yeah, I think the sun would cause a lot more damage than the pressure. Yeah, yeah I think so. Okay. <laughs> that's, right. that's pretty... That's and, cool. and, and, and that's it for the science behind science fiction. <laughs> The science yeah. of having your ass out in space. Science, <laughs> science fiction today is as roasted by God. If you want to know what happens on your, you know, if you have your ass exposed to the vacuum of space, you want to tune in to Science Fiction Remnant. We'll tell you the truth. <laughs> Once we find out what Just it is. Close. Just close. That, that microorganism that can't coexist in the vacuum of space, you know which one I'm talking about? Ah, uh, yeah, I do. Um, yeah, she can get through your ass. I think. I remember the name of it. Outer space too. Great, great, great. Tardigrade. 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 There you go. That thing survives in anything, and it'll eat you out. It is real life. So should we get the t the DNA of that, and you know, make a new human? I'm down, bro. We gotta patentize that. <laughs> Wouldn't be winning any beauty contests. Take that <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like the ending of this year has a head of seven feet long. Hey, and and, and that 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 face that is so kissable. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! Okay, do you think that's a good you know uh, a, a good that's point good, to to move on to the next subject? Mean. I could be like, like when you got your A tone, your film game is an A game for the girl. <laughs> and you got the alien with the tone popping out with the face on it. You think that's our cue to move on to the next segment? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dark science and sci fi. Okay. So, you know, <laughs> I just. I don't know. Do you have anything on this, uh, Ray, or, or you want me to? Um, I I've um, I was looking into the whole thing of this mist. The 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 space station having the curved floor where you could sort of look look across the curve and see people standing over there with their heads pointed sort of in towards the center. Yeah. Um, and and Very as you walk, you sort of walk around up to where they are. Um, and I thought that that was well done in the movie. Uh, but then um, I, I'm looking at this article here called The Problem with Spinning Spacecraft, um, and it's it's actually in Wired.com, and uh, it's interesting that Wired's doing something on the, on spinning spacecraft, and they're talking about the smallest the smallest rotational circle that you could use that would be comfortable. Oh, for yeah. humans to live on and and it, it is quite interesting there's a whole bunch of um issues that you've got to deal with uh because if you think about it the smaller the circle the bigger the the um spinning gravitational differential between your feet and your head so if you're a long way from the center of the spindle you're your head and your feet are moving at a closer speed than if you're closer to the center of the spindle. Yeah. Because your feet will be moving at X and your head will be moving at X plus whatever the difference in the radius is. So your head will actually be moving a lot faster than your feet if the, if the circle is smaller. Do you, do you get what I mean? By drinking without drinking. Somewhat, yes. You know, <laughs> I, I, was, I was looking into this and and I don't know if this makes any sense, but 
for it to to provide a one one G and and let, Ray, let me know if this is what you have on yours because um, yeah. we obviously have the article. Mm -hmm. um, the 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 station has to be one hundred and twelve meters in diameter and rotating about four revolutions per minute to be able to do one G. Right. But the question that I have, and, and I don't know if you, this is something that I really need to read a little bit more, is do we need to have, do, do we need to make it bigger? Because there's always going to be a difference, like you're speaking just, just, just now. There's always going to be a difference in the um, gravity from your feet all the way to your head. So your feet are going to be X amount of gravity uh, and your head will be a complete different. Um, just don't know how far apart, but I like to think that how far apart depends on how big the station is. Yeah. Like I said, the bigger the, the bigger the circle you're on, the more natural it will feel because your feet and your head will be under a closer level of gravity to each other. Mm -hmm. The smaller the circle, the bigger the graph, the gravity differential between your feet and your head. Yeah. So that comes into play. Um, also, if if this is a rather than a station, if this is a starship moving forwards, if it's doing any acceleration, you're also going to have Coriolis forces coming from another direction. Oh, yeah. So it's going to be a corkscrew rather than a circle. Oh, wow. I, I completely forgot about that one. So you'll be walking, mm -hmm. like, leaning to a side. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it gets all sorts of funky. <laughs> See, um, what they're sort of imagining is that, that you would be in an acceleration couch or a, a sort of a fluid tank or something for the acceleration part because that squash you like a bug. Um, depending on how much acceleration you're undergoing. And if you wanted to get there in any sort of decent amount of time, like unless it was gener a generational ship, um, you'd want to be accelerating for the most of the first half of the trip and decelerating for most of the second half of the trip. So you're going to have this angular force on you, even if you're in a rotating section of the ship moving forwards. But if you had a cruise section of the voyage where you are maintaining a speed rather than accelerating or decelerating, then it would work because you wouldn't have the, the forward or reverse force on you because you wouldn't be changing your speed. So then the rotational section would make more sense. Uh, but, you know, depending on how quickly you want to get there or, or how efficient you want the time spent to be, you wouldn't necessarily have a cruise portion of the trip where you wouldn't be accelerating or decelerating, depending on how much fuel you had, I guess, as well, yeah. depending on what, what limitations there were to do with fuel. Because not only do you need fuel to speed up, you need fuel to slow down. Um, to, to change any sort of thing in space, like it, in, on Earth, if you want to slow down, a lot of the time when you're driving, you just take your foot off the accelerator and roll to a stop. You don't have to, you know, reverse your your speed and when you've got a frictional surface all you have to do is use a brake which is another frictional surface and then you can slow down because you're using two frictional surfaces to bleed speed but in space there's no frictional surfaces so the, the same way you speed up which is thrust in the direction opposite to the way you want to go if you want to slow down then you're going to have to thrust in the direction you're going to reduce your speed so usually they'd like turn the ship around and use the main engines and just like decelerate in the same way that they accelerated. So you have to have fuel to do both of these things. So there's a lot of differences in the way that you speed up and slow down in space. Sorry, Gio, I didn't catch that. That you'll become a meteorite by the moment that you catch orbit. Yeah, exactly. Like like containers full of battle robots. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but hey, but yeah. Um, I'll I'll drop that. Um, the uh, actually, I'll just drop the link straight away into the private chat for the for the recording, and you can add this to the show notes so that they can have a look at that. 
that's quite interesting, the problems with spinning spacecraft. And that's my part of um, Science Behind Science Fiction for this week. Awesome, awesome. Um, yeah, I, I got a couple of things here, but I wasn't feeling... I, I don't know if you if you see any of the notes that I put in there. I, I wasn't feeling... I wasn't really feeling any of those. Um, I'm, I'm really glad that you mentioned that one because I don't know why that escaped me uh, because I do have to agree that that was one of the the, the, the better, um, uh, most accurate things that I can recall uh, seen in this movie. It is the, the you know, the, the rotating um, uh, space station and, and how people can just walk around. Um, but, um, you know, it, it, that's uh, uh, interstellar travel was one of the things that I brought in. I mean, we, we kind of talked about that. Um, it, it, it doesn't really, you know, they don't really tell you much on how. Um, obviously, um, you know, like it's it's obvious on, on that it's actually pretty fast and how they travel because uh from the beginning of the movie, uh, we can see how uh, the the boss at the uh, space station was telling um, the main, uh, you know, Dennis Hopper, the, the main character of the of this movie, that he was late by two days. So when you think about traveling, I mean, just let's take for example Mars, right? From Earth to Mars, uh, what is it right now? That, isn't it six or or, or nine months? My day one. To go from well, here to Mars, depending. Well, well, how it how it works between planets is that the planets don't run in a straight line and rotate at the same speed relative to a line down to the to the sun. They all move at their own rates, and there's what's called windows between Earth and Mars, where Earth and Mars are at the closest in their orbits. And apparently, I was watching a thing the other day about how um, Elon Musk wants to get a million people living on Mars by 2050. And between 2024, when his first flight is supposed to go to Mars, and he's, he's a long way from that, I think. He's, I don't think. Yeah. He's that. But say he managed to get one of his starships up to Mars in 2024, right? 2024, there's a there's a um, a launch window where the two planets are close to each other, right, in their orbits. But there's only 12 of those between 2024 and 2050. Yeah. So if you wanted regular travel between Earth and Mars, it's going to vary significantly between an optimal window and a don't even bother, it's way too far away window. Um, so that would be different amounts of fuel, different amounts of time, you know, if you've got to put more fuel into a spaceship, you can't have as much cargo or people. So, you know, it's it's all going to vary hugely. So, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a TV series take this into consideration mm -hmm. or a movie. Um, yeah. They all gloss over it because it's too complicated. Even I, I don't remember seeing anything in The Expanse about optimal transit windows or anything. They just fly between yeah and stuff. they don't give a crap so i mean it, it it all depends on how i can want to be is it going to be too complicated for the plot it's going to ruin the plot because people have got to wait like eight years before it's convenient to go between planets again um all that sort of stuff so i mean it might look complicated to get between planets or even fly around the solar system to various points in sci-fi as it's written now, but the actuality is actually a hundred times more difficult. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so that actually concludes my my portion of <laughs> the sign. Um, it was just one of those things that I, I just had to speak uh, about it because um, it, it's it's really interesting to me. Uh, but if you if you actually listen to the show, or you know, we probably have spoke about this uh, in, in previous episodes, uh, so I didn't want to like, you know, just hammer in your head all the time. But 
Um, I find it really very curious how, I mean, even even when you mention the expanse, which is what what I consider to be one of the most realistic uh, space uh, TV shows out there, um, even they uh, chose not to really explore that aspect of space travel. So that 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 should mean something um, of how, you know, I guess not necessarily difficult to explain it is, but how to work it into an enjoyable show in a way that it doesn't bore people. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, doing it for real is going to be damned, damn difficult. And it's going to be a lot like um, what it was like traveling to the new world, like, you know, take months and years and, and you know, never know if the ship's even going to make it and if they get there, then, you know, they're going to be isolated and things are going to be rough. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whenever you're colonizing a new land, be it on the planet during the colonization period or in the colonization period of the solar system, it's going to be rough. It's going to be hard. People are going to die. That's what happens. Yeah, and that's, you know, we if, if we study history, if we look back at, at, at human history, this is exactly what happened when um, humans venture out into the sea and colonized uh, a new land, uh, people died. I mean, you know, it could be uh, hunger, um, it could be diseases. Uh, it could be natural no, disaster. Exactly, we have no idea what's, what's waiting um, in, the, in, the, in the other end. So, I mean, a lot of the, a lot of the time, the ships were just not sturdy enough to go out of sight of the land. If you went outside out of sight of the land, you were screwed. Um, way back when, in the early days of, of seafaring, mm -hmm. uh, and to sail across the ocean in a direction hoping to find somewhere safe to stop, uh, it was pretty goddamn dangerous. And Columbus nearly didn't make it. Um, they got they got um, held up in a in a calm area of the ocean where there wasn't much in the way of wind and they nearly died. Yeah, and, and that sort of shit happens. Yeah, ships disappear. Nobody knows what happened to them. It's the end of that. Oh yeah. I mean, we're we're going to be tracking the shit out of anything we send mm. to another planet. <laughs> we're going to know what happened to it. Hopefully oh, yeah. they won't use two different measurement systems and, you know, face plant into the surface of Mars with the first colony ship. But, you know, presuming that that doesn't happen, um, we will know exactly what's going on. <laughs> well, they, and, they, can uh, always, they, they can always measure things in, in uh, you know, washing machines. Washing machines, yeah. yeah. That, oh. that, that works. <laughs> oh, wow. So uh, this concludes our show for today. I... I really hope that you guys enjoy this episode that we actually put for you um, and enjoy the, the movie that uh, hopefully you have watched this. If you have not watched it, remember, um, we are very curious to hear your thoughts. So reach out to us uh, and let us know what you think. Uh, but overall, thank you so much for um, being with us. Um, just one more episode. Um, I mean, I, I know I speak for everyone here and, and, and you guys can actually voice your opinions uh, and, and let the audience know, but we are very humble and we thank you so much from the bottom of our hearts because you had made us your show um, and, and, and you come week after week to listen to us um, geek out about the stuff that we all love. Um, uh, and again, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, I'm sure that I speak for everyone here when I say thank you um, very, very much. Um, and we hope uh, that you continue to make us your favorite pod uh, and look forward to uh, have you on our future episode. Thank you. Thank you.